Welcome to Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. Let's build something. Welcome back. I got to thinking uh, there's a lot of these Let's Plays for the video games and whatnot on the, the YouTubes there. Uh, what? What's the difference between us just coming together as a community and building something? So I got this idea in my head. I wasn't going to do this video yet. I was going to wait a while, try and get it all hashed out, and then make a nice project and get it all nice and pretty for the YouTubes. My idea here is I have a project idea in my head. I know where I want to go. Um... I know vaguely about how to get there, but there's a lot of gaps in between. The idea is to build an electric ice auger. So if you're unfamiliar with ice augers or augers in general, it's just a big drill that you use to get through the ice to go ice fishing. Generally those are all motorized, either using propane, your arm, or gasoline electric the ions been around for ages that thing's been uh, around for a bunch of years now and then strike master just started bringing out their lithium series of 40 volts my thought was we could build something kind of utilizes that same principle makes it real easy to kind of carry your own battery packs makes it real nice and simple um, we could do that and uh, we can 3d print parts if we need it or I can fabricate and weld what I have are two Mora ice augers. One's a five inch a hand crank with threaded adapter that I've already modeled up an adapter for. So we already have that modeled if we need it. And then I have a 10 inch Mora for some reason I bought at an auction for a dollar. Don't know why I'll never hand crank that thing. But I think it'd be a good goal for us to try and turn that 10 inch auger with this electric auger at the end of the project. So the idea would be to finish this project up by probably mid-March because that'll be the last safe ice that I can get on. So that gives us uh, about two months to try and uh, get this worked out. Um, otherwise, it'll just be a year-long project and it'll come around again next year. I want to use these. These are the Black & Decker pick up anywhere at the Walmart or at your local big box store. These are 20 volt lithiums. I can guarantee there are 18650s in there, goes up to 20 volts. There is no current limiting between any of the posts, so if you have a positive and negative connection, it will produce 20 volts at whatever amp requirement that you need, because some power tools, with uh, when they get under load, produce quite a few amps. So this is a promising battery pack to run a motor. So because this is 20 volts, a lot of the motors, DC motors we're going to run, may not be able to be capable of 20 volts. So what I've done is I got a buck converter. This is just a DC to DC converter. It takes uh, 24 volts or lower and converts it to 12 volts. Uh, it's about a 20 amp max rating. It's a day green. I don't know what it is. I'm thinking these are for golf carts and motor schools. More motor schools, motor scooters, uh, mobility chairs, etc, etc. So I have this just in case we need it. And then I went ahead and got one of these. This is uh, the aforementioned mobility scooter motor. Uh, it has a one-to-one -one shaft out the back and then this is geared down not sure how much. Uh, I'm not going to open the case up, but it is geared down quite a bit. So it has a really high torque value at this end. The problem with this end is it doesn't have any sort of indexing locations. The only thing is you can see right there, it does have a pin mount. It can also be mounted with these three, I think these are six millimeter bolts. Uh, a quarter 20 fits in there, but it doesn't tighten down. So the thread uh, difference is, is a little bit there so this is a 12 volt motor turn that right side up for you this is a 12 volt motor um, it's CCL PM802 with a gearbox that's G0 G3E 
it says right on it, it's 12 volt DC. The problem with these brushed motors and these gearboxes, uh, especially from CCL, all of them are rated from 12 to 48 volts. So I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know about this stuff. That's why I'm posting this video so we can get this project together. I don't know a whole lot about the brushed DC motor verse. Um, I do know a lot of them can handle 12 to 48 volts. So I don't know if we can just plug this straight up to the 20 volt. And I haven't tested it yet because of that reason. Um, but what I have done is I went ahead and got another piece for this project, and it's these. These are called uh, something I can't remember. I think they're just like straight or slotted terminal connectors. The real cool part about these is that they fit right in. I'm putting it into the negative ter terminal here. They fit right into the slot of that battery and butt up to the back. So it's real nice. We can 3D print an enclosure there where this will just snap in straight on top, I'm thinking. So I ended up modeling this up anyway. It's just a prototype, just a proof of concept. It seems to work well. It stands up and mounts with two quarter 20 bolts, uh, but it's open to interpretation. Uh, just wanted to make sure it would work out, and I'll put that 20 volts. So it seemed to work out. Oh, we're on the side whatever we come up with that we can just snap in there and uh, have that power our motor. And then the last piece that I picked up are just some silicone. So this is, a, I think, 240 strand or something, copper wire. This is nice uh, silicone wire. Pick that up. Doing the whole 3D printing, kind of learn that silicone's some of the best material to have on the outside of the wire. So this is 12 gauge. Definitely going to be strong, uh, high enough rating for what we're doing uh, amp-wise. So we're going to have a couple issues to, to work out with this, and I was hoping you'd come along to try and make that happen. What I've done, of course, is because I'm impatient and I just always like to do stuff, I've modeled this up already, the motor, up in Fusion 360. So let's jump into that. All right, we're in Fusion 360 now here, and I've modeled this up the motor itself just kind of as a, a non-functioning just placement holder model so it's just a skin essentially of the model but it is one-to-one -one for the motor um, and I've just used it kind of so we can determine how we want to mount this thing and in the future we can use it to kind of assess where the holes are going to be and what needs to be cut but my idea right now for this is going to be one of one of these situations where it's just like a uh, just like a normal power power auger you would see so you got this I was thinking like half inch um, just steel framework around it and then what I was thinking is somehow make some make a momentary switch here on the right side uh, or the left side I guess it wouldn't really matter make a momentary switch to turn it on and off this motor can also be reversed. Uh, it's a brushed motor, so if you uh, reverse the polarity, it'll go backwards, which would be really nice for drilling back out of the hole. Um, this would just be maybe like a 1 8 inch, like a 3 millimeter steel plate on the bottom where those mounting locations could be. And then we could design kind of a 3D printed coupler or something to connect to the two different auger bits. So the auger would be down here, ice would be on the bottom, you would hold on to this and it would drill downward. That's my idea so far. I'm thinking the 3D model kind of battery pack would go here, buck converter here if we need it. Uh, if somebody does know about that, the 12 volt, pushing it above 12 volts, please let me know. And then any other electronics we would need to either run maybe if it does go up to 40, 48 volts, maybe we could run two of these in um, series. Or if we wanted to run two of these in parallel just for more juice, something like that, we could put that on this plate here. So that's been kind of what I'm thinking on that. But there's so much more that could be done with this. We can model in whatever. So that's why I'm here asking you if you'd be interested in starting up with this project just something fun to do uh, if we get it done early enough might be able to uh, maybe go somewhere to a maker fair or something and uh, give it away to somebody if they don't have an auger because 
this is just a fun project. All of these pieces so far have cost me total from eBay uh, less than $50. So uh, you can pick up hand cranked augers for less than uh, like 40 bucks, usually about $20 on uh, Craigslist. A lot of things improve when you don't have to sit there and crank on a motor and you don't have a clogged carburetor and you don't have bad gas and you don't have to worry about getting your mix right on your auger. A lot of things improve when you just pull this out of your pocket and drill a hole or 12. So that would be the other option. We get this finished. We see how many uh, holes we can actually pull. So how much this actually drains out with a torque load on it. You know, just things like that. I think it could be a good series. So if it's something you're interested in, uh, please go ahead and leave a comment below. You can find me on all different social networks. I'm on Instagram and all that. So I think the first thing to think about here is the electronics in association with the motor. There's going to be a lot of amp draw to that brushed motor and then the gearbox initially, but then it's going to even out. So we have to come up with kind of a circuit that we can use even if we stay with the buck converter or we don't. Ideally what we would do is have a switch that's capable of that many amps and we'd have a switch that's capable of reversing polarity while maintaining the integrity of the battery pack as well as the brushed motor. So there's a lot of things to think about and I'm going to need your guys' help for that because I am not an electrician. I am just a guy with a 3D printer that thought it'd be cool to fabricate a ice auger from scratch. So here we are. So if this is something that interests you, be sure to uh, go ahead and subscribe. Maybe uh, give the video a like so more people see it. Also leave a comment let me know what you're thinking about this. Uh, this is all going to be comment based suggestions from Instagram, YouTube. If you want to tweet at me, you can. I, I don't really use the tweeter, but it's there. Um, I do have all these social medias. You could also email in any suggestions, and we'll keep this series going for as however long it takes. Uh, if it's done in a month, it's done in a month. If it's done in uh, six months, it's done in six months. And I'll just freeze a bucket of water in the chest freezer or something, and we'll get after it. So we'll be back to our uh, regularly scheduled programming soon with me and Goofy Projects just uploaded uh, whenever. I have one in the, the barrel right now. I'm editing it so uh, it should be out relatively soon. But I thought I'd get this one out there just to get the process going and get any comments and ideas from it. So uh, yeah, be sure to check out social media. Hit me up. Let me know. Keep your amps up and your filament dry.